to execute. As I go into the future, yes. and I knew you were moving into this building today, it couldn't have come at a more perfect time. Because it truly is our mandate. It's our church's mandate. If you think back to where we were not even a whole two years ago, we're in a small little one room place in the shopping mall at all the phones. We were, we were right there. Uh, <laughs> very small, sorry. Very, very small room. And then we stepped out on faith and we said, we need to move to a bigger space. Because we we began to pack the house every single Sunday. So we said, God, bless us and help us to move to a bigger place. So we moved to a bigger place and gosh, within less than a month, we were packing that house. And we began to think, what are we going to do? Where are we going to be? Like, we're not going to be here long. And we had always prayed and wanted the building. And God finally blessed us. He made a way so that we could get it. And today, the reason why the Christianity faith has gone and has grown as much as it is, is based on the one thing that we're going to talk about today. And that is the Great Commission. You see, that's why this church is here, and that's why that, this church continues to thrive, because we are all walking out the Great Commission. But before I get to the Great Commission, I actually want to take a step back to right after Jesus was resurrected. In Matthew 28, it says, While they were going, we called some of the guard men into the city and told the chief priests all that had taken place. And this is talking about how they had seen Jesus resurrected and they saw the angel come move the stone. This is what they're talking about. And they went to the other, the others, and they take, they take counsel. And they gave the soldiers a sufficient sum of money and said, "Tell the people his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble." So they took the money and did as they were directed. And this story has been spread among the Jews to this day. Now, the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came to them and said to them, all, their, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and the whole, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now, last week we talked about Easter, we started with Friday, when we, we participated in the betrayal and the beating and the crucifixion of Christ. Last Sunday we celebrated the glorious moment when Christ was resurrected. We heard the angels say, I know that you see Jesus who was crucified, but he is not here for he is risen." And we learned that the resurrection, the resurrection changed everything. This morning's text is the final passage in Matthew. It shows us very clearly the implications of this radical change, where Matthew charged at the end of Matthew, the end of Matthew begins with a charge or a command or a mission that the resurrected Christ gives his disciples. You see, his mission has been accomplished. What he came to do is done, but their mission is just beginning. And so they call it the Great Commission. Now, if we look at the mission that Jesus left them, there's something I noticed. I noticed that it was unstoppable. You see, Matthew sets up the close of this paragraph, what I just read with you about the guards going at the tomb, going to the religious leaders, and them trying to concoct the story that said, no, he didn't raise from the dead. His disciples actually stole him. This is what they did. They tried to cover up Jesus' resurrection. But no matter what, they weren't able to stop the truth of what had actually happened. You see, it was actually a remarkable moment because the, sol the soldiers, if they would have actually admitted to being asleep while the disciples came and stole his body, they were actually admitting their election of duty, which could have cost them greatly because they would have been looked upon as failing the mission, what Pilate had told them to do. So the chief priests had to pay them a great sum of money to make this worthwhile for them to, to actually concoct the story. You see, it is remarkable to see how many things are ironic here. You see, the guards who were supposed to be preventing the resurrection of Jesus actually became the first witnesses to his resurrection. They were the first ones to actually see him. The soldiers who were put in a position to be a form of security now became the greatest 
security risk, security risk to the elders because they were the very ones who knew what really happened. The religious leaders who worked so very hard to prevent a situation where the disciples couldn't steal the body of Christ, yet that's the very story they began to tell. They were so scrupulous about the blood money from Judas that they are not willing to pay such a large sum of money for the, to cover up the resurrection. It was only two days before where they stood in front of Pilate and called Jesus a deceiver. Yet that is now the very thing they're trying to do to the people, deceive them. But no matter what they did, God was always ahead of them. And in some cases, God was directly using their actions, even the ones that he did, that they did in spite, to accomplish his will and purposes. At every turn and with every action, they were playing right into the hands of a sovereign God. And in some cases, when they thought that they were successful, they were actually failing. When they thought they had won, they had no idea that they had lost. Jesus said this would be the case when he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What was he saying? He's identifying that God has a mission. And no matter what, that this mission to build his church is going to come to pass. And nothing is going to stand in the way of that mission. And even though the religious rulers threatened the disciples and imprisoned them, the gospel still spread. The effect was that even the priests began to be converted. Do you see the point here? The point is God is in control. His followers are free. The mission of the gospel is unstoppable. And this means that when life gets dark, <coughs> biblical history is filled with examples of how God came through with everyone at lost all hope. Always keep in mind that God is working out His plan and you're just a part of it. You may not fully see what's going on, but you can always rest assured that God's mission is unstoppable. Always keep in mind that God is doing things that you can't see. And even though it may look like we are losing, that with God we are always going to come out winners. My parent, it means that no matter what, God's will is going to come to pass. And His will is that we go into all the world teaching and preaching His good news to everyone. Now, I said this was a perfect message for where our church is now because we are embarking on a new chapter of our history. We are opening our own doors to our own building with our own name. This is a time where we have God's mandate to go into the world. We should be able to pack this house to where in a year or two, we're saying we need more space. You see, because when Jesus told his disciples to go into all the world, this was an imperative command. It was, say, it was the same type of command that a parent would yell to a child on the street and say, get out of the street, there's a car coming. It's not something that is a suggestion, it's something that he told us to do. You see, we cannot take this commission, this, this command to go and tell people about the Lord Jesus and what he's done, we cannot take it as a suggestion, but as a command given by the Lord Jesus himself. For see, if he is not Lord of all, that he's not Lord at all. And if we hold him to be Lord of all, then we need to tell everybody. It needs to be what, what seems from our lips. Because God is so great that we need to tell everyone. You know, we are also proclaiming the Lord Jesus to those who are lost. I mean, why wouldn't we? We know the final destination. We know what will happen to those who died without Christ. It is our mandate. It is our mission. If we had a cure for cancer and we knew that thousands of people were dying every day, why wouldn't we want to offer this cure? Why wouldn't we want to help those? In this case, there are people, eternal life, where they will, where they will spend eternity. We must share this good news. Here's a story, a true story. <clears throat> that is a great analogy as to why we need to be participating in the Great Commission. About 30 years ago, a man was walking his dog about 5.30 in the morning when he spotted the smoke coming out of a two-story house. When he looked around, he saw that there was no chimney or a fireplace, and so he thought the occupants might be in danger. He went up to the porch and peeked into the living room window and saw smoke coming out of the kitchen area. This is when he knew that there was a fire and he started to pound on the door. He ran the door there furiously, but got no response. Then he started pounding so hard on the front door that he thought he might break it down. And the neighborhood dog started to bark. The lights started coming on in the neighborhood. Finally, a light went on on the second floor of the house. And when a man came down to the living room, only then did he realize that there was smoke coming out of the kitchen. 
There was a long, this was long before smoke detectors, smoke, smoke detectors were commonly used. The man then ran upstairs to evacuate his family. The family escaped without, without any disaster that could have happened because of the fire. Here's an analogy. There's a fire coming. The man who was walking his dog didn't think, well, I don't want to, I don't want to disturb anyone at this hour. I don't want to embarrass myself. No, he was bold and did everything within his power that he could to warn the occupants of the fire. There's another fire coming. Jesus spoke of it more than heaven and in fact more than just about anything else that he ever taught in the gospel. You see, hell is very real. Should we not fear for those who don't know about the fire that is coming? Can we not be bold enough to take whatever steps that are necessary to share the good news of Jesus Christ? Who cares if we get embarrassed? Who cares if we are humiliated because they turn us down? Because in fact, they're not rejecting us. They're truly rejecting Jesus. Shouldn't we care enough to warn them about this coming fire? Shouldn't we care enough about our neighbors, our friends, our family, or even strangers to let them know that Jesus Christ loves them and he died for them? You see, remember that the power is in the message, not in the messenger. And today, Mount Catherine, we have a great ending on this. This church opened the doors to be a home to the homeless, to be to love those who are told they're not lovable, to wrap our arms around those who've been kicked out of other churches. I'm one of those people. I'm one of those people who had given up following God because I had gotten kicked out of another church because of who I love. I had scars. I had pain. And it was this place that was able to reconnect me with my father. It was this place that was willing, that was able to put the bomb on my soul and allow me to reconnect with God. And Mount Calvary today, as we open these doors of a new church, we have to continue to remember that this is why we opened our doors. And we have to continue to seek out those who are hurting, who've been hurt, who've been lost, and let them know that they have a home here, that we are here and we're ready to love them and we're ready to heal them and we're ready to let, allow them to reconnect to their God. There's a quote that says, it takes the spirit of God with the word of God and a person of God to make children of God. And Jesus just said this, go. Thank you.